Yes, welcome to the Open Goal World Championship snooker event. Uh, we've got four guests today, four competitors. Our first one is the hungriest player on the scene. It's Mr Kevin Kyle. Take the snooker balls out your cheeks before you come down. Here he comes! Give a wee look to the camera, Kev. Our next one's the staunchest player on tour, the only guy that wears brown brogues with his black suit. It's Andy Halliday, aka John Parrott. <laughs> Can't see where I'm going, man. That's what you're for in the stairs, man. Any chop? Any chop? What is that, the Penny Arcade? <laughs> Tremendous. Who was wearing this before me, man? This is just Slady. Next, we've got the horniest player on tour. A man who's never got his cue at his hand is Paul Slade. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> and Dennis Taylor! <laughs> How they doing, boys? Oh. <laughs> How are you, mate? It's great to see you. You're your favourite. I'm people to be Andy. How are you doing? Great to see you, my man. And now, the main event. The best Scottish player of all time is Tyler Gay! Yeah! 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 Mr. Slain, now we might have got a wee game, but oh, just oh, a wee prize wow. for you, mate. Just oh, thanks so much, mate. I ah, know, just a wee oh, prize, wow. mate. There you go. Thanks very much, John. That's no worries, no worries. I've had that 147 by you. No way. Aye. The PlayStation. It was a bus for PS3. John, how you doing, mate? All right? Good to be here, brilliant, aye. Brilliant. Thanks very much for coming on. No, oh, brilliant. Appreciate brilliant. It. So what we've got, we've got Stephen Lee at the end. <laughs> We've got Anthony McGill in the middle, we've got Graham Dock <laughs> and John Higgins. <laughs> Serious question to on Graham Dock, because I was a bit worried. Is, is his boss drunk yet? <laughs> Aye, no. Aye, no. Aye. Oh, you're his double for, aren't you? Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, mate, fresh off a of 147. Aye. Did you hear what he done after the after he got the 147? Disappointed. No. He's, he's going to pull you up. Aye, sorry. Aye, oh, open, I did actually. Open goal. I know. Aye, it's, side not, ferry, it's, it's, it's not the side aye. ferry. Sorry, sorry boys. Go sorry. Understand. It's open goal. Sorry. Gutted, sorry absolutely gutted. <laughs> <laughs> I love true. John. That is true. Me and John, we get on the great, didn't we? Me, you and Joe. We go on brilliant, John. We really do. Who's Joe? <laughs> Your brother. We go on. We had our differences, me and John, but we move on. <laughs> oh, was that because he stood you up? Absolutely. I uh, know. Well, sorry. Well, no, I. What were you doing? I think some come up. No, I was desperate to play him. Desperate to meet him. He's a superstar, isn't he? Yeah, he but is. that, that some had come up that I had to. I just couldn't do it. But we'll, we'll get again maybe later we'll on the day. Aye. Well, Super we've got the queues. We've got the chop. I got the queue club, John. Did you ever go to the queue club? I used to. Used to play in there. I could, but I as well. Okay. Go and get a wee game. You ever seen his I've not seen you. I've not seen a guy with a suit on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen a guy with, no, there's no. Kev, you're in the snooker. Oh, I'm not very good at snooker. Sorry. I like a wee game of pool in the pub. Yeah. But no, I snook us. Too difficult. It's, it's too a hard. game. You've uh, yeah, guys are better playing pool, but snooker, you've got. It's so much harder than people ah, think. Okay. Never played it's it, man. harder. It's harder. Who do you like better, Dr. Higgins? Oh. <laughs> I don't know, but like, it's getting very lopsided this show. I'm going to be sitting in the middle of the kitchen. I know, John. John. All right. So, are you still practicing every single day, John? Eh? No, they know, because uh, well, we don't know when the tournaments are going to start. Um, I might be playing maybe could be a couple of weeks or it might be at the end of the month the way the draw works out so if I'm playing a couple of weeks obviously I'll need to get back the draw should be out soon I'll get back in playing but uh, if no I'll have a week off for that yeah. so. and uh, Anthony what was the script for you in that Welsh boy? Chase him down a tunnel <laughs> wasn't happy with his behaviour <laughs> what was he doing? just messing about my head <laughs> That doesn't take a lot to, does it? No, it doesn't take a lot. <laughs> I'm close to a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually talking, John, when we were upstairs, that John actually said to me, I, I, fucking hell, relax yourself. <laughs> we think I get a bit nervous with John, but he was saying, eh, Ronnie's very much like me. Aye. That's what John said. Is he? Oh, aye. he's a ringer. Well, I'm not looking, but obviously the way he's talking about it. See the way they act and things. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the way he's acting. Like that, John? Who do you look like? Ali Carter. There's a wee bit of Ali Carter about you. The pilot. Oh, the pilot. Well, uh, 
How do you ever, how come the snooker player ever like gets so nervous at the shaking? Oh, today, no, Addy. Do you? Mark, Mark Selby as well. Mark Selby, ah, he, he, he shakes his head like he used to be really, really bad now, but he's managed to calm it down a bit. But ah, he, a lot of players do. You, you maybe just don't, you don't know it's a movie on the TV. Yeah. Aye, a lot of players like I, I shake it. I think I've shook since I was about bloody 20. Too many Budweiser, but aye, so. Aye. Wee Ding doesn't shake it. Wee Ding doesn't know what day it is, does he? He's so chilled, man, isn't he? So he's, good he's, he's, he's just, he's, in, he's got the most money out of anybody. Now, he's just the amount of deals that he's got in China and different things. He doesn't, he doesn't. Do you want to use massive in China? Eh, uh, no, like it's a ding. Like he's, he's massive. Ronnie, he's, he's massive falling. And when you go over there, you, you're asked to go over and do a few things and. Aye, but but Ding, oh, he's a superstar over there. Is he? Aye. Aye, he's got to wear the mask. See that mask that we're obviously wearing a lot now. He's got to wear it all the time when he's in China because he's that well known when, when he's walking about. Oh, to so, like the standard. Aye, he's it? got like, a wee sort of disguise. Aye, but aye, he's massive. But why does Henry not still play? I think, I, think he's, I don't know. I think he wrapped it. When did he wrap it? Two thousand twelve, I think he was about forty. But I think he was asked to do a lot of things in China right. and he couldn't divide his time. He was he was spending time, too much time in China and then he, he just, but he hadn't won a tournament in maybe, I don't know, about eight or nine years. And for somebody like him, no one in a tournament because he was always used to winning. That's why, John, I it think you're much better than Stephen Hendry. <laughs> <laughs> I do think so, Stephen Hendry done it. I would, if, listen, bro. You're in used to share Clarissa. <laughs> we bit flash in the pan, I would say, Stephen Wise. Flash in the pan, he won the World Challenge. Ten years in a row. No, 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 ten, but he won, he won seven. He won seven Terrible World titles. for me. But listen, John, the two words we use, longevity. And that's right. what you've done in abundance. That's two words, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you've done in abundance. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I had, there was no crowd this year. No. Was it hard? Aye. Aye, it was really aye. How it, I don't see how that could be, because the crowd's quiet anyway, is it not? Oh, but it's just, a, especially at Crucible, it's what they generate, although they're obviously are quiet for you playing certain shots, but they're right on top of you and they can put the pressure on you and, aye, it was a weird, weird... Was, that, was there a crowd at the start initially? There was, aye, And then Ball and Goal had turned up. <laughs> Ruined it for everyone. <laughs> Back to behind closed doors. There was about 300 in for the first, first day. But then, then they say, no, the government clamped down. I would on find it. that in a wee, in a way, a wee bit stranger. Do you know what I mean? When it's there's only about 15, 20 percent of the, the the crowd full. So I'm talking about then in the SPL. They're talking about doing test events in the, the twelve. Aye. Only a thousand fans can get in. Right. Right. Mental one. Because so rugby, so rugby, so rugby fans are going to find a nice turn off. Oh, rugby fans are back. How's that? I know. No, it's mental how, how they've done it. But it's it's, aye, it's what you've been used to. The crowd. Aye, it was it was crazy, but. When you see a Sullivan won it, and then they let them in for the final. They let three hundred in for each each session of final, which was good. But ah, it was it was tough. And your favourite bit about the snooker is touching cloth. Oh, touching cloth. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. Okay, <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan, though, what a guy. Still winning world championships at that age. Oh, sorry, ah, he's, tremendous. He's, isn't every it? every sport has that one character, and he is in 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 terms of snooker unbelievable to keep. And the thing is, it's it's the Everything outside of snooker, we're on your song. The attitude and the, the, the things he says in his interviews and stuff, you just don't know where he's taking it serious or where he's taking the piss or, or what he's doing, but to just rock up and think, oh, I'm not really trying, I don't really feel it, but still able to win a world title, it must feel, feel like shit, John, sometimes, surely. <laughs> he's so, not trying. What he's, is he's not trying. Listen, listen you, like the least you guys have used don't really know, but you know he's practising like mad behind the scenes. Ah, we all know that. Now, you can't be that good. To just think, right, I'm gonna pick a queue up. Even the year he did take off, he took but he was doing a lot of exhibitions and he was practicing a lot. It was just and then he turned up and won the tournament. But he can do that because he, he is that good. As a as a snooker player, he's he's the best. He's is the best like, player that's is, ever. Does he play like ever him? Picked. Because you've seen a few comments in the past, didn't you? But see, see lately the last the last few years at tournaments, he sort of keeps himself to himself. He does like when when you're at tournaments, like you'll, you'll be courteous to people in that but he just likes to come in, play, and then go away and do what do what he does. But stories with him, John. Your brother's stories? got him on toast, hasn't he? Was it not Raymond that asked for a picture of him? Aye, no, I think Ray, aye, but I think Raymond got a picture where him went now years ago, and then he wanted like an up to date one, up to date one, and he, he, he says no, he doesn't do photos, which he doesn't do photos, right? But uh, 
for Jason, just because I think he knows him. He's, yeah. he's known him since God, look, I turned professional. How many years ago was that? Twenty-seven years ago or something. So he just grabbed him. He just says, "Ronnie, get a bloody picture taken." He stopped the carry on. So, and he did. That's what happened. Aye. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but that's what John, happened. John, any other stories, Ronnie? Just <laughs> <laughs> you want Johnny or you want Ronnie here? Ronnie. I'm not <laughs> 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 Ronnie, 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 John Higgins is. I don't think he gets. I think there should be a statue about him. I'd wear a boots. John Square. Wish you. No, I do. John, no wish you. I don't like Wisher, John. Uh, you don't like Wisher. Fantastic wee place. But, no, <laughs> but John, no, seriously, I do think this, this country, we, we're going about, I don't think there's a uh, world champions. It, we don't create that mentality. But say, this guy, four time world champion. We don't get that anymore. I believe there should be a statue. Um, and that's my final case on that, John. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, a fantastic oh, listen, guy. listen, what I would say, well, I've, I've come along after Henry. So Henry won it seven times. And I think I was the next squad to win it. So when you win it, people are saying, ah, oh, well, Stephen Henry's already won it seven times. It doesn't make a big deal. And then when you're playing alongside probably the best players I've ever played, I picked up a Q or Sullivan. Right. So the, the, the guys will always be judged together, Ronnie, Stephen, things like that. How do you think don't know. Produce world class snooker players, but we can't produce world class football players. Shite weather outside, isn't it? Now you just want to inside all the time. No, I, I, I think I think it was at the time in the mid eighties, snooker was massive, uh, and in the clubs and a lot of cracking clubs were everywhere, whether it's Scotland, Edinburgh, whatever. And then there, there wasn't all this <clears> digital <throat> age and different things. And all the dads used to take their boys down to snooker club, and then aye, and then obviously you had your heroes like Stephen Henry as well. So that brought a lot of us through as well. You just wanted to be like Stephen, so. Steve Davis and different things. So, I know we've, 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 we've always produced we Graham Dock, world champion as well. Bro, uh, no, Dan Graham. Maguire. Me, <laughs> Any Rangers fans snooker this? I we built it. We dot. We dot. We dot. That's what I was surprised that you were missing. You were missing the dot, but now he's buzzing like. I just know what he's like. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, we can do it. What about you, Barney? It's looking well, mate. I'm losing it. No, we can do it, mate. He's season ticket having his boy in that eye for a few years. But you watched the games a couple games together, didn't you? Say that like Rangers game. Was it the one that you went mental? Aye, we, we were out in China. We were out in China, so we were once. He wasn't wanting to come out. It was a jelly and ice cream one. Now, we'd won, we'd won the league already. And you need to get me Graham out of his room because he just loves hibernating in his room. So we just got him out one day and he's like, I don't know if I want to come and watch again. game. Because he says, I go a bit mental when I'm watching the football. <laughs> so we ended up with any of this. It was the Dubliner or something in Beijing. And I think Barry Ferguson scored. I think Rangers won 1 0. He just looped off the table and he was getting at Laldi and it was nearly a wee altercation. But no, no nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing mental. But no, he likes, he, oh, he's, he's daft on Rangers, we agree. And you've watched, and you've been in the crowd for Andy as well, haven't you? Nah, apparently. You like my song, don't you? You're <laughs> <laughs> you, you singing his song? Oh, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Hamden, I was telling him there now, 25 years, there's only one Andy Halliday. <laughs> that's why that's I'm about nine SPL clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Tell a story, though, you might be going to say, like. <laughs> was, it, was it a bin man? So I went, I went to run the other day, and uh, I got to the end, and I was knacking, I'm walking uphill, and this guy must have looked at me and thought, it's state this guy. So he's <laughs> to me, uh, he stopped it, he stopped it, but it was like a tight tight road and he stopped the, the lorry in the middle of the road people were queued up behind him that they must have been looking he's like ah where are you going I was like ah, I'm not sure mate he's like I come seeing for sale like kidding on you hun bastard he just <laughs> drove back like that it was good for you mate. is that you isn't it absolutely <laughs> <laughs> is there any players that are big in Holland big in Holland any not as big as Slaney but no there's no there's no many Dutch players no there's no there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no. There's a no massive in Holland. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's not. Nah, they think they Dutch players. <laughs> don't think no, there's none. There you go. You need to take snooker over to Holland. I love snooker, snooker, but that's what I was thinking. How do you take snooker to the next level? Do you know what I mean? What do you mean? It's a brilliant sport with Johnny. Oh, well, how do you get better at it? No, I mean like you want to elevate the sport. Aye. And you, you do need, I, I do think you need more characters oh, in the right, game. Bro. John, do you know what I mean? And it's no acting like uh, exactly. And it's like no, that. it's no coming in acting like clowns and all that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's about the personality, John. You've got it in abundance. Um, longevity, I can say next year. We're Ronnie as well. But the, the, the younger guys, John, I don't know what it is. Snowflakes, they get caught now, don't they? And the snookers, plenty of them, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who are you talking about? He's a boy. McGill was quite good. He's quite good. No, honest, McGill's great. McGill's good. Aye, McGill. McGill. I McGill. was aye, gutted for him. He was so close to getting there. Did you see that frame? Aye, yeah. So, so oh close to getting there. But he, he could have gave Ronnie. He could have gave Ronnie a game. Now, I think he's got the mentality now. He could have... But how, how come it's took him so long to get to a semi-final? 
We had, well, he broke into top 16 a couple of years ago and he won a couple of tournaments. Uh, oh, great player, but then just growing up sort of things, different things going on in your life, whatever. Uh, who knows? Mm. And then he'd be fell down a little bit, but he's far too good. He, he's come back up again and I think he's back in the top 16 now. And he, oh, he'll stay there now for years. He's, See how he's practised again? Did he get a pint after it? Aye, we've been out a couple of times. Aye, but there's sometimes that we're playing and then we might be missing. And then you just say, right, just put the cues down and then just go for a pint somewhere. I've known a beer for about a year, but that's what we, we used to do. We just say, right, man. And then you'd end up in the West End somewhere and getting thrown at pubs and different things. Can but you go back to your house at the. <coughs> I love you, honestly, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Pure hero, but it's probably that, that word new Andy, didn't it? Hero gets thrown about far too much, but guys like that, it's just. I <laughs> didn't know who I was when I walked in, did you? No, I don't know, of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> right, Kev, we'll go on to the football, mate. Oh, no. Bad midweek for Celtic. Champions League exit versus Ferenc Varos. What did you make it? El Nussi, for me, still got a lot to, to convince people that he's going to be a worthwhile signing um, over the course and distance. But I don't, obviously, there's a lot of talk, Si, about no player striker up front. That was Hanet. That for me didn't work because yeah. I think we've all played football apart from John, right? <laughs> Obviously, he's played football. <laughs> but my point being is that a manager comes to you and says to you, Look, you've been injured for a few weeks, you're back fit, you might not be match fit, but could you give me a good 60 minutes a day? Yeah. Surely a Jetty and Kamala could have gave Celtic a good 45, 50 minutes through the week, maybe got a couple of goals. Because see when you don't play with a striker side, you don't have those runs that strikers make, runs in behind, yeah. come to your feet, going short to go long, vice versa. You've got midfielders doing midfielder things just at the different end of the park. And I think that's where Celtic struggled. They couldn't get that ball in behind or when they went wide, striker moving in the box to maybe get an opportunity. It just stunk for me, Si, and it was, um, and, 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 and sad as to say this, they kind of got into the reserved. Yeah. Slaney, what about the defending tour? Don't well dominate as people say dominate. But well, see if you want to your piece on the radio the other day. Si. No, seriously, mate. Was one? Did you hear it? No. It was one of the best bits I've heard, mate. No. In a long, long time. We are talking about Celtic had all the ball. That team set up for that. They wanted them to have all the ball. That's uh, not dominating the game. No, passing no, the ball at all. the back. And, and I think they had twenty-five shots. Barely Beyond taking a chance also. for me. Yeah. Um, very disappointing. As Kev said, I can't believe he didn't play two up. Um, I love two up. As I said last week, you certainly go for one if you don't get a two. <laughs> and they were saying that the one was overweight. I always settle for the one that's overweight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell, you exa- I'll tell you exactly why. Because see the one that's overweight, if they get picked or selected, they appreciate it much more. <laughs> 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 So a jetty or Lee Griffiths would have been sitting there chasing everything down, but my God. <laughs> but I want to ask you, because you've, you've played under him as well, as I have. Ever known Neil Lennon not to play with a striker? Mate, genuinely, after most training sessions, we used to get kept to the, the wingers and uh, to put crosses in for strikers. All, all the boys were away. There is certainly an influence with maybe John Kennedy, uh, Stratton, Take my earpiece off, Stratton, you're doing my... He didn't who's, do that. who's on the other end of that earpiece? I stayed my... He didn't the Polis? Who, who? Who's on the other end? No, I stayed my... He didn't. And, but I, when I was there, I'm telling you, uh, Lennon loves Stokes and Hooper were up front all the time. If they were on the red, he played Daryl Murphy. Did I was a fan of him? No, but listen, put him in. <laughs> he loves strikers, but Andy, he did. But to start these strikers... Um, listen, last year, they put McGregor left uh, left back and have topped it with two knee strikers this year. And uh, really, dis- really, really disappointing. Certainly should be beating teams like this, John, shouldn't they? Couldn't believe it. Nah, I just listen. I go back to when I was a young boy. My, my favourite ever game when I was about 13, I went to see Celtic play Partizan Belgrade in the jungle. We won 5 4, but we were out in aggregate. <coughs> and that's just Celtic, I think, on mm. the back in Europe. Firing forward. You, you think about it, we're one each, we've got half an hour to go, could have an extra half an hour at half time, uh, extra time as well. But we're just firing forward all the time. As a freak, we need to get this goal. And you think, just, just settle, just. Ah, but I go back to Lennon. He didn't play ball and goalie and big Julian last year, and then I don't know how you can play at least one, Stranger. one strike. <clears throat> uh, and he, he, I, I just, I just, I just couldn't. Have. But then, if, if you if you know him obviously that well, you think, were they really that unfit then? 
that, that if you say he loves a strike he, he honestly he, he, join your spot he's not wanting to lose he's not wanting to lose professional player can I play 60 minutes man I'd be very worried professional players can I play 60 minutes the way I hear that sometimes you've got the ball it's not like he's chasing the ball chasing a bit of back four you've got the ball but almost, I kind of—it almost feels when they say this as if like it's a fat guy for the pub or something. But you know, that's <laughs> what it feels yeah. like they're, pre- they're training every. I can see if it's a long-term injury, that's different. I mean, because you need to be careful whatever the injury they've had. But you'd certainly know if they've maybe no match sharp. That's how you get match sharp. And uh, did you know see it, Andy? Boy? No, I never. Did you but enjoy it? Maybe, maybe he's not been great in training. I bet he scored on the Saturday, Andy. <laughs> Who cares about training? I, I don't care how good you are I, I've been honest I didn't watch a game but I, obviously I was as surprised as anyone that they went out uh, I wanted to ask you this though Andy he came out and said that people want to leave he's surprised I know, that he's players want to leave I was shocked at that what well, surprised that he said it, that it, seemed as as it, was, it seemed as if it was a very emotional comment because it, it, mm-hmm. it, I, I don't know if he quite meant what he said and then if he did it's one of the ones where you're in the dressing rooms like, does he talk about me like, yeah. you know what I mean? everyone's probably thinking the same thing but Obviously, there's been there's been speculation that I might be leaving and, and Chan might be leaving, but I mean, you don't really come out and say that after a game. I would I would have loved I would have loved you know, when, when he was asked obviously before the, the the moral game, and he still if that's what he really felt and he, he stood by it and basically says, ah, there'll be people leaving here. I would have loved, but he sort of backtracked. I don't know if that was the powers above that maybe says you better you better wind your neck in here, blah blah blah. But I would have loved it if he says, ah, there will be players that they didn't give it their all, and I'll be changing it. I think but the fact as well that he said that and came out and played the same team. Yeah, I, I, so. See, other than Edward, how can any of these players be asking to leave? What, what have they done? I, I, we grew up watching say, like John, uh, Chris Sutton scoring goals against Juventus, Barcelona, Henry Larson. Never asked to leave. What, what, what have they done to merit a move? But with the lights of Big Sutton and that, were they near, near, near the end of that? Even the, Petrov that and that, though, mate. Mean, that, 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 I, the peak. I know, I know what you're Never, saying. I don't know. Edward, obviously. He's, he's the only one that you could expect to go to a, he, he, a bigger club. He's the one that you think, but the other ones, if I mean, it, 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 the way Lennon was saying that, I would have played beat on then. If, yeah. if, it, if supposedly as I that's want to go, I'd have put big beat on then, and then I would have put Turnbull in if, if then they're saying is it Ch- and Cham that's going. But then you hear all the rumours now because everybody's saying, well, who is it? And then somebody was telling me, oh, Callum McGregor wants to leave. So you say to yourself, that's set up now all the rumours. That's how that starts. That's like how it. it starts with Lennon coming out and saying that, and then so. You need to say what about him thinking that you were tearing his dad. Oh, I know. <laughs> Do you remember it? I remember it. I. <laughs> Were you raging, John? No, no, I was the way, but I, I just couldn't believe he's grabbing And I'm thinking, I've never met you before in my life. No, I mean, he's gave me the old uh, thing, me, but aye, aye. <laughs> Kev, see, in Cham, though, I can kind of see his frustrations. I think in Cham's top class, but he doesn't, so, get, a, he doesn't get a go in his in position. No, I think we talked about in Cham last year, and I always used to think that he was the better out of some of the Celtic midfielders, but for me, because he gets on the half turn all the time and is always looking to go forward, his first thought is always on the half turn, can I get forward? Whereas sometimes a lot of Celtic boys are side to side, side to side, and that slows the game down. When you're not playing a striker up front, if you're slowing it right down the midfield, how are you supposed to penetrate the back four if you're not getting the ball forward? Whereas in Cham, like you've just said, he never really seems to get a good run of games where you actually see him over like 10, 12, 15 yeah. games where you actually think, fuck it, he's a, he's a good player. But is he a really, really good player if you've got that run of games where the Celtic fans can see him? He seems to be like, right, when he's fit, sorry, you're back at the team, you come in. He seems to be that kind of guy. and I think it's unfair, but if he wants to go away, then I think he's got reasons to want to go away. Maybe no expecting a bigger move, but just maybe to go somewhere and play. Yeah. But no, I I I can understand say that in charm for me, I think it's one of the better ones out of that midfield. Slaney Kamala, how does he feel if Christie's starting ahead of him? Well, Tammy managed to spot on what he said, transfer list. You would ask to leave. I certainly would. Would if you? you? I, if you can if Edward and Griffiths is it, you can't start when there's no striker there and then you don't even come on, you're never going to play. So would you right. chat Lenny's door the next day? No, I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't do that, no. Go through your agent? Aye, through the agent, <laughs> sort that out. Uh, but no, I, I don't think he's good enough, to be fair. No, I don't I, I still, I would still play him if you've got nothing else, but I don't think you're a Celtic striker for me, Si. But you, you made a great point, Si, and I wanted to say it because you deserve the credit they did. No, you to get your own point, I didn't give my point. Sorry. Um, but no, <laughs> we, we, you, we, we you, Simon, with the... Uh, uh, with Barcelona the best team that's ever played the game under the back in the Pep Pep sorry oh, no, and it was the Pep but anyway but exact team that still team, yeah. and uh, Neil Lennon brought Tony Walton yeah bring Tony Walton v Barcelona but you don't start a striker v Ferrecocious do you know what I mean Ferrecocious sorry Ferrecocious he was mad for 
I'm going to say old school, but it was so much like strikers all the time, crossing and finishing, playing get strikers, the forward. To, get the ball into your strikers' feet. And as Kev said, if it affects the whole team, you've not got a striker there. And it's, I just didn't recognise it. was that even like really. five minutes to go in the commentary if you watched the game. Somebody said in the commentary, Celtic need to keep passing the ball side to side. No, they don't. They need to pass the ball forward. Dar- Darling the day. And pass it. the ball side to side for 90 minutes and got anywhere. I like Darling the day, but I'm going to say to commentators, come on, start commentating and stop trying to coach. We don't want to hear coaching. We want to hear you talk about commentating. Terrible fucking point. <laughs> 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 I uh, right, right, last point, John. You're a kind of mother well man. David Turnbull signed. You, I've, you've told me before you like Scottish boys playing for nah. Celtic. Good signing. Brilliant, aye, brilliant. Listen, I've got a story to tell. I, I used, to, when I was growing up in Wisher, I lived in a, 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 a street called Waverley Drive, right? It was basically like the second main street of Wisher. So you couldn't get to play out the front. So I went 50 yards down for me and it was called the cul-de-sac. So which was, oh, there was about 10, 11, 12 young guys my age when I was about nine or 10. And David Turnbull's dad used to stay there. Like his, his brothers, like there's, I think it was four of them. There was, Eddie, Paul, Tony and Jerry, I think, the brothers. So, I knew Ed, Eddie, his dad. Yeah. So, it was it was last year when, when Celtic were getting linked with, with David Turnbull. I said to my brother, I said, I said, I the young boy, David Turnbull. He says, you know you know whose boy that is, don't you? I mean, well, I says, no, he says, that's Eddie's boy. And, oh my God, see when you've seen the picture, seen the picture of like, double. He's absolute double growing up. <coughs> and, and it was one time, Eddie was about 18, and he was going out with his, I think he was starting to go out with lassies, or he's going out with his mates and that, and we were all playing football about nine or ten, and I went, all right, Eddie, where are you going tonight? And he just grabbed her ball. He went, I'll tell you where I'm going tonight, and booted it out of the woods. And we couldn't find it. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't find the ball. Because we were always winding up. Like, all right, Eddie. But his two, his two uncles, Paul and Tony, they were a wee bit more early age. They would come out and have a wee kick about a wee bit. Great move for him. Uh-huh. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant move. Great families from as well. And he, he comes across a right level headed boy. What he went through last year. Now it must have been heartbreaking for him when he's obviously got the big contract and then he have the mental strength to come back and say, right, I'm going to come back and, and do it again. He, he looks even stronger. Right? Uh-huh. He, he looks stronger coming back yeah. as a guy. Now, God, that to be fair, I don't think the injury fun. was the worst thing that happened to him last year. I think it was his, the interview he gave us. <laughs> <laughs> Was he there? That was, uh, that was a tough lockdown, man, that one. I thought he'd muted his camera for half the fucking podcast. <laughs> but he's, uh, John, he's done well about his back. <laughs> John, who's your favourite Celtic team when you were growing up? Great question, Paul. Well, well, listen, going back to that game, I was talking about Partizan Belgrade. It was Jackie Jackanowski scored four goals, didn't he? And then that night, when obviously we Callum McGregor and Kieran Tierney came to get us, I, I was coming on for Jackie Jackanowski at that Legends. Oh, that legend! The legends, because Big Martin V. Cost says, "What half do you want to play?" I says, "I just want to play ten minutes, mate. Just put me in. I'm no, I'm no in any shape to go and play for like forty five minutes. Just give me ten minutes." And it was near the end of the game, so Martin V. Cost is like, "Right, Jackie, you're off now, John." But when they come off, I'm like, ah, "Get any chance, Jackie? Any chance you coming off so I can go?" In. But we, it was a surreal moment when I'm actually going on the pitch, and Jackie jacking off. She's coming off and shake my hand, like, "Good luck, young man." And then later Did he call on you that, young man? What? Did he call you young man? Aye, good luck. Oh, what man. a guy. Aye, now, and then I've went on and then after it had a couple of beers. So when you think, when you're younger, I think you always, you always think of the, the teams back then, the, the centenary year, like 1988. Frank McAvenny. Now that McAvenny scoring, that was amazing. And then obviously with Tommy Burns teams and they had Cadet, Decano, Hoy Doink, they were brilliant to watch. But as I said to you before, it's got to be Man and Eels teams. Yeah, uh, yeah, just because what a unit they were. No, I mean with Sutton and Larson and Pedro. What about the Lennon team with the likes of Young Slane in it? Did you watch the game he played? I didn't see the game, no. Came came on game. Wait, wait. One now we're getting beat one each I came on. There you go, Some James 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 the game. <laughs> Unbelievable, John. But you were you were meant to be you and Simon, you were meant to be big, big stars, you know what I mean? Nah. Lord of shite, wasn't it? <laughs> John, no, I, like, I'd no, say no, that. Listen, I had <laughs> Decent up a little bit up there, John. Weak, very weak. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, it's Turnbull the player at um, Celtic Mead. Uh, uh, Andy, you're going to get your time uh, in before my age. Don't worry. Uh, worry. <laughs> Does he the player that Celtic needs? Um, I don't think they need him. But I think that what he'll bring us, when, when he gets he's still in that team, I think it'll be very hard to dispose of about that team because I think he's got the capabilities 
to kick on, yeah. become a Celtic midfielder regularly. Um, but where does he play? Where, where, where does he get a game in the team? Ten? I, I'd like to see him kind of sit behind, I was going to say the front two, but Celtic don't have a front two. Front one? Front none. Right, so <laughs> I would like to see him just in between side because I think he's got that capability of threading the passes, the wee run the corners and things like that. I think he's got a football and brain that could create opportunities. Um, so he'll just wait for that moment, side for his opportunity. And when he gets it, I would like to think that what he's went through to get this move to Celtic, that he will grasp it by everything that he has and make it his own. And I wish him all the best because we all talk about young Scottish players, side with potential and stuff. He's got it. Let's just hope they fulfil it. And we can all admire him because it's good. No good for Celtic. It's good for, for Scotland as well. This could be the last we see Andy Halliday as well. Shane Duffy's meant to be signing the disc. Aye. It's <laughs> so coming straight here with a Mate, baseball That's back. why he's got that uh, snicker to you, Ah, exactly. Aye, you've Keep me his arms left. It'll get wrapped right in the room. He's eating. No, I said if I'm going to be fighting Shane, we're probably going to agree in a cash weight because he's got about six stone on me. So, <laughs> let's see what we can do. <laughs> um, Right, Ronnie O'Sullivan's interview and the back of Neil Lennon's interview. Do you agree with what he was saying about the younger players? Nah, listen, I thought he was out of order saying ah, things like that. He's bang out of order, isn't he? Out of order. But listen, it, it's, it's, is it, is it, if it's his opinion, is it still out of order? Or, uh, would he, would you rather he would just, uh, just no, give I a mean, chance? No, I listen, Ronnie's no daft. He's, he's clever in what he says and, and he, he always says things, a reason to, to get, now, call him in, cheese, TV. He, he knows, because he is the one guy that when he says something, it will be reported about, yeah. which is good for snooker and different things. But you're right, you're saying that. But when have you got any reason to, to slag off the younger? Gym? They aren't as good as him. And it's true that they, he, he could play to his 50 and these guys will never overtake him in the rankings. But why do you need to come and slag the young players? You know what I mean? I, I know one man that loved it. Like, I loved it. I did every week. Did you? I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, John, I know what you're saying. Nah, I, don't know what I, you're I, saying. I, I, I just didn't think it was called for. You know what I mean? Was a lot of these young boys probably looked up to him as well. You all look up to him, Andy, you know what I mean? He was the main man, but I thought it was shocked. John, do you know what interview I loved? Remember Ronnie's in China? Do you remember the China interview? What, what did he do? Fuck. Oh my God. I don't think actually we can talk about it. How did he say? Do you want it was that bad? Tell us, Lenny. Nah, you can tell us. Nah, it was bad. Can we? Uh, I don't know if we can say right? it. I don't know. Uh, go say it. it. You see it. See it. He was uh, <laughs> kicking on his mic, suck my dick, talk about the mic. <laughs> Meet the other reporters. No, he wasn't. I swear to God, he was. What? He was. To the mic, but is that what the size of that? No, Did the mic get Would any of the younger boys pull him up for that? No. Nobody hearing about him there? No, any of them. No, you can't really. But that's Billy Sunday. I'd be like Messi, maybe saying it to Mohamed El Yunusi, you're not in my class. Right. So you're not going to Mohamed El Yunusi, you're not pulling Messi up, is he? So. But has he maybe done it to get the younger players to do better now? Nah. Well, they could only do as good as, as good as they can, can't they? You know what I mean? That, that, listen, I know it's, it's good for people watching and and think, oh, it's, it's a character, at least he's speaking his mind and different things, but... Ne- there's no need for him yeah. to say it no, there's I mean, a time and a place there's a way to act in it especially if you're the big role model for snooker <laughs> to come out and attack young players that have looked up to you for 10-15 years so don't go don't wrong Andy because it's one of the things like see the thing is like you're talking with Neil Lennon saying that thing the other night there that see when we come off we have just thrown as soon as I could walk right off there and I've just lost a black ball game and somebody's like right John go right in front of that camera and like you don't know what you're saying sometimes but at least they like some maybe Neil Lennon managers. You've got 10, 15 minutes with your players and then you can come out and maybe you've, now the, the mist is cleared a little yeah. bit. But with us snooker players, you're, you're thrown right in because you would love to say, no, give me 20 minutes. And they're saying, no, we've signed a contract with BBC. You've got to go right in there. It's in your contract. Stand there, speak. So I think he's won a game. I think he beat Williams, I think. So he's obviously delighted he's won. His adrenaline's gone and he's just saying whatever's whatever's coming out of his yeah, mouth. Uh, no, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's nonsense, but you can't legislate because it's... I've seen that video of you and Williams on you, sir. Have you guys? Did you see that the other day oh, on Twitter? No, somebody put it on YouTube. Uh, I know, oh, my mum and my dad. What age were you at? I was 15. Playing in a man's I, tournament now? I had a shed I had with me then. <laughs> Honestly, God, man, the hair. But uh, I, that, that, was a, that was the very first tournament, uh, junior tournament. Because I, I, I was never any good when I was younger. And it was only really when I started getting into playing Glasgow. As I've said, we all use boys, you've got to play with better players. And I've been playing with better players for about six months. And I went down. First time I'd played, Ronnie, Matt Williams, they were all the best young young players at that time. They'd never heard of me. And I went I went down and won the tournament, five grand or something, when I was about 15. Did you win five grand? Uh, five grand, I uh, What was uh, Ronnie like as a kid? 
<laughs> Are you going to ask him any questions about him instead of Ronnie? There you go. Listen, listen, that, that's, what I'm saying. that's what I'm saying with Ronnie. Look, unbelievable player, but every snooker player, we were, we're all just working class guys. Mm -hmm. We're all just like, you've came for nothing. Your mums and dads haven't got anything. They'll take you down a local club. He grew up, he was living in a big mansion in Chigwell. Now his yeah. family, he had a table in his house. You hate him now, didn't you? He had a like table that. in his house. And he, 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 his dad would get all the top professionals to come to the house and play him. I Ken Dockett used to go, didn't he? Aye, they, they all used to go and play him. And then apparently, as I said, I never grew up when I was younger with him because I, I wasn't any good. But apparently he was at all these junior tournaments. And he had like a thousand pound in his pocket when he, when he was 15, 16. So yeah, five, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was one of the things that like, you've got to respect him as well. That he, He'd maybe come up with a lot of money and he still had the drive that he wanted to the best player in the world a world champion or whatever but he, he grew up in a different life he grew up in a different style like for, for the rest of us we were all keeps that quiet as he says have you ever seen John Virgo do a trick shot? Oh, <laughs> remember that programme? Oh, yeah. what was that programme again? big break big, big break, break. John break. Davidson, yeah. it? big break aye, aye. <laughs> He done well out of that John Virgo now he, he was just locked I think yeah, Jim Davidson was at a holiday, holiday camp and, and he walked into a, I think it was where they were doing snooker or whatever and John Virgo he was, he was doing an exhibition. Jim Davison was there for something, and he quite liked Virgo, and, and he and he got him to, got to be TV the main man. Like got him to be the main man on on big break. It was massive. Thing, uh, Saturday night, tell you what. Saturday night. Uh, Don't she, she that, but she be um, knowing that, but she be the. It's unbelievable. You, Matt Williams, and Ronis are still at the very top, isn't it? I don't know any other sport where well, Federer, tennis, and Federer Nadal, but it's similar to that. Mm. That you have kept at the very top for twenty years. I think that's incredible. So maybe. Maybe Ronnie has got a wee point, what we saying. No, no, I don't mean no. to say it now, but I'm just saying like, it's unbelievable you'd have kept yourself at the top, innit? No. No, I, well, you could, the thing is, what, what you're saying, it's just because you are good players, no, and you are maybe better than the majority that's come through. Yeah. But as I said, there was a whole raft of us coming through. As I said, like we, we all started playing in the mid-80s, and snooker was massive at the time. But then snooker sort of... A lot of people weren't beginning to play it. Right. So you never had that influx of youngsters coming through, like with, with the mentality, just to try and you know, make money. Or you, you didn't have anybody coming through to knock us out. It's basically the Chinese that are all coming over now, and a, and a lot of Europeans that are coming over. They're all great players, but they've not got the, the mentality to, to beat us yet. To win. Uh -huh. To win. They're, they're great potters and different things, but if you can play a, like a, a, a sensible sort of game against most of them, you're going to end up winning. Slow them down. Slow, you can, you can See, sort them. Uh, the 2000, out 2011 man you won the world. Aye. That was the most emotional. That was one of the most amazing, <laughs> mate, seriously best tournaments I've ever seen it. Aye. What, what did that I, mean to you? Oh, when I beat Trump in the final. Aye. Okay, it was, I, well, as I said, I just lost my old man about six months before that and then uh, went on to play and, and all through the tournament you were just thinking, God, just don't try and lose. I don't, just try and, I, I don't, I just was not autopilot the whole turn. I couldn't really work it out. And then when I got to the final and I, and I beat Judd, I now, as I said, my boys over there and all the family and different things, it was, it was more for them, not, I mean, not for man. me. It was Kev, did you watch his 147? I didn't know, sorry, no. It's your first in the World Championship, wasn't it? It was my first, aye. I, I I've never done it before. See, yeah, when, your your when, celebration, I was surprised at. I thought it was quite muted. You just had a big smile on your oh, face. Yeah. But I couldn't really jump about. There was no. I just. Are you just thinking what count to put the 55 grand in? No, I was, <laughs> no, I was just, I'm just thinking. But I, it was because early years I've had plenty of chances to do it, but I've just always bottled it. Because right. you go back to like with the crowd, they're so intense, they're right on top of you, they're so, they're so wanting you to do it because mm. they want to be there to see a 147 being done. And it's just got on top of me all the time. And that actually helped me with no crowd being there because I felt near the end, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to do a maximum here. When what do what you was know? it for? I was to when uh, when do question. you know when you've started that you've got maybe, say, four or five reds away and four or five blacks? When do you think, how many balls in do you think you know that I've got a chance here? I think most players, when you, you're you obviously trying to win the frame because Aye. you've got to try to guard against no missing so the other guy can come in. But once you get to... I don't know, 70, 73, 80. Once you know the other guy can come back and win, then you're like, ah, right. And if the balls are all sitting there, you think, right, there's a great chance to do it now. Uh, and I thought, really, when there was about four four reds left or something, oh, this is a great chance. But obviously, you're still nervous, but... Uh, and that's what I was going to uh, ask you when you're talking about your nerves at the beginning of the show there, and you're saying you're getting a wee bit shaky in that. Do you right. get shaky in that, knowing that you're only, like, three, four balls away from... Listen, see the thing that goes through my head all the time when I'm on the final black? It's Ken Doherty. 
His uh, face. Aye, that his face. Oh. His face just comes through to it's me all the time. And I've never missed a black when I've been on it, but I'm thinking to myself, my God, imagine missing a black. A simple black. A simple too. black. And uh, I managed to pour it touch wood every time I've been there. But when he missed that black, it was for a supercar or something down in London. Wow. It was like, I don't know, I know 150. I know to be fair, he wouldn't have set a supercar anyway, Ken Docker, would he? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he wouldn't have set a supercar. I know you're slagging him for bringing up Ron O'Sullivan, but the time Ron O'Sullivan just refused to pot the black. Aye. It's incredible. Aye, just, what, on a 147? Aye, 147. Uh, the to, to, the price fund was too low. Aye. Aye. The ref at the start, right, I think that did the ref know what he convinced yeah. him to end up potting? Aye, he, he, he just went down to pot it. He says, come on, Ronnie. I think he, I think he respects Big Jan, the referee, and Big Jan says, come on, Ronnie, just Put the black. Uh, Big Yan doesn't piss about, eh? Remember Michaela Tab, I loved her. Big Yan. <laughs> Big Yan. Big Yan's a football hooligan. Is he? He, he follows fire and all that. Oh, he's a football no hooligan. No way. Oh, aye, aye. Yeah, have you heard that? The big man's a football you, hooligan. You wouldn't you mess with Big Yan. Is he? Oh, Big Yan, aye. Football he's hooligan. Dutch. Aye. What team? Fire and he Oh, he's fire and all that. Well, you, I have. I've seen him earlier. Oh, he's fine. Fine, fine well, Did he hear the gloves on? I was in one. I was in did he hear the on? I was in the windy and I could see him run by. <laughs> <laughs> right, amazing. On the Rangers. Andy Halliday. Yet to concede this season. Is it the year? Can we call it this early? I told you, I, I, I've, been com- I've been quietly confident since the start. Like I said, it's going to be difficult. Uh, we spoke about Celtic so being a good team. They've obviously dominated and won X amount of titles in a row. I don't like mentioning But <laughs> again, Saturday, Rangers don't, don't really look like conceding now. Just stir shape off the ball and uh, everybody's you know, saying about John McLaughlin coming in and obviously competing with McGregor. He's literally had nothing today. But start the show again for me. Ryan Kent. Kent he's on fire isn't he different level this year just, it, it, it felt like he, on Saturday he knew he was too good for everybody on the pitch yeah. and just every, every single time he got the ball he was creating something that he was beating somebody setting somebody up he was just uh, he was unreal for 90 minutes I say to you as well I think Davis makes a massive difference Aye. I think when Kamara and Jack plays everyone comes to the ball because they, they've not got the ability to put the ball at the top the way he does I think there's definitely there's definitely been something in training to work on being a bit more direct because it was the last two games as well I think there's a lot more emphasis on runners in behind, behind the boys at the top and then when that happens the game gets stretched and that's how you get people like Ryan Kent and, and Brandon Barthel I think that's the ball. to Reynolds not being on the team Aye, you know, like one, one thing changed. Alfredo does well is, is he runs the channels yeah. well but he doesn't really run in behind no. it's, I've, what I've noticed with Kamal Roof so far is he's, he's everywhere to be fair he, like, he, he drops in deep he drops it wide he runs in behind but I think there's been an even more emphasis on the likes of Kenny and Brandon Barkett running behind. Yeah. And like I said, when that's happened, it stretched the game a lot. And I think Devo oh. and Ryan Jack, two of them, are just looking for any passes all, all game. The one worry is for that Kamarath heads the ball like Paul Slane, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah, he, he could have, he could have scored could four. Have to, he could uh, have scored four. And you're just hoping that, obviously, with the more games that he's going to start to play, he's going see, to put them away. See, Slane, are you worried? Uh, no. I'm not. No, listen, Rangers are, are looking brilliant, but I think with the mentality of the players at Celtic, I think that I'll see them through to do it. But see, see what they were saying with the amount of chances at Rangers and they, they could have racked up the goals. I wouldn't be worried about that. Like, because, no, no, because you'd be worried if you're not getting the chances. But the thing is, I will say, though, Slade, if Kamar Roof kind of take three chances against Hamilton, you might only get one chance against an Aberdeen or a Hibs. No, I. Would be clinical enough to take it? No, definitely. With, the, with, the, the, with your striker, you would yeah. want to see him scoring. But I mean, as in with the goals, I think if you're creating chances as a team, uh, I think. You, Listen, you want me to score, but um, it's if you're no creating chances, it's made a worry. But certainly, I heard I heard you saying Andy as well with a striker, he can be no sharp, no no playing, but you still expect him to be taking one of the chances. Yeah. I think. Okay. If they think. Striker, that, 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 that's a dream for you. The three chances, isn't it? Oh, they hate they hate us. Like nowadays, you don't get that quality across and then and get that opportunity with him, but to have it three times. Whereas I think just with him, side, because he's just come up, just signed, he's only in the door. It's going to take him a few games and see once he gets one goal, but it's one two, gets a bit of love or in the the city and stuff, he'll start to feel that confidence and the, the goals will start to see. On that, okay, but I agree with you, but uh, well, like, if that was he's touching that, uh, but see if you're a goal scorer, mate, do you need to be fit to take the chances? He's six yards out. I'm not saying fit to, to, to take the chances. But did you, yes. what did you feel like when, if you were being out and you came it's back a in? See, see, goal, score goals, a yeah. confidence thing. It's the same way being a midfielder on the side and you ping a 30 yard pass to the full back or to the, the right wing, whatever, you just do it because you're confident for doing it. It's the same with a striker. What's probably his fault is, is when that ball's coming in, he's thinking about it, whereas the good strikers don't think about it, they just know right there, touch. And you've actually scored before you've realised you've even touched the bloody yeah. ball off your head, whereas I think they now, it's just a different environment for them on the side. It's just a new club, getting to know his teammates, getting to know the league, and it's just maybe realising, well, I've actually got more time than what I think. And maybe it's just a confidence thing. And once that comes, 
he will score goals because he's getting his selling, he's doing everything, 99% of what strikers should be doing, getting the sell opportunities, getting himself in the right places, he's just not taking the chances, yeah. they can't keep missing the chances, I they will it, come. Like you said as well, I think it, it is too early to obviously start judging him, but what, what I will say is I, I thought his link up during the game was good. Good. The box, wasn't he? I thought, but with yeah. the chances, Alfredo's probably sitting on the bench, licking yeah. his lips, thinking I could have took a match ball home with him. So. But I also be buzzing he missed the chances, don't he? Ah, he's surprised yeah. you never put him on? No really, no, no after last week, because I don't think, he's probably, no matter what, if, if he's, his attitude's not been good in 10 or whatever, he's, he's probably dropped him out for, for the squad for a game and, and, and made him sit on the bench for 90 minutes and watch and just say, listen, obviously you need to buck up your ideas or you're going to be here for, for the foreseeable. Yeah. That's if he's still at the club, obviously. So I see on the Moreno swing, right? See the longer Rangers keep winning and keeping clean sheets and performing well as they're doing and they're not using Morelos. Does he then, and if say, say he's, he's not being used, does a team still want to come in and sign him and take him away? If, if they don't, is he just going to sit in the bench for the rest of the season? That's a, it's a different one for the manager, a difficult one for the club, because obviously I think ideally they would like to try and sell him. Here's one for you, you'll, you'll play the next game, Manelis. Who'll play the next? Think, United. They'll, they'll, oh. You'll play. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Do you all think he'll be off during this window? See, if you're a top manager for John, would you sign him with his disciplinary record? He comes back a wee bit heavier, falls out with managers. If you're a top manager, do you sit the... Would you sign him? I think, I think you still would sign right. I, well, I, I, I think so. Uh-huh. Know what I mean? Because I mean, I know he's I know he's not scored against us now after we played, but he bullied he bullied the defenders a lot uh, of the time. Know what I mean? Oh, he was a good player. He was game over in games, but he was brilliant. He, he just couldn't. He, he bullied score. the life out of some of the defenders. So I would want him at the door. Hmm. I know he, I know he didn't score, but he, for a Celtic fan, you mean you don't you want him? I would want him at the door. Of course, I would, but. Just for that was my point last week. What was that? That was my point last week that I got pulled up on by you when they said, "Oh, but he barely sold it in the You said he's never scored against Celtic. Mm-hmm. That wasn't obviously what I was getting at. Yeah. My point was that just because he hasn't scored against Celtic, he decently made to say that he's not made it difficult for the Celtic back four yeah. because he has done. Do you think he could go to like a top four England? The English team. Top four, nah. nah. But but what I will say is the hardest role for me in football is playing as a lone striker mm. and especially in Europe yeah. and his European run last year was was remarkable it really was 14 goals in the Europa League and he's playing against the likes of obviously he played like Portos and Finals and Young Boys but it's good teams mm-hmm. and he was honestly he was bullying centre-halves which is what he can do but see top managers now they're looking for ultimate pros aren't they I just think see, see if I'm watching Alfredo and I'm a I'm a Newcastle or a Palace yeah. he, he, he looks an absolute perfect fit for him yeah. like he does but like you said, it's obviously the, the extra stuff that comes with it, yeah. seven red cards a year. So there's a manager out there that is ideally suited for Morelos. It's just what that manager needs to take a punt on him and put an arm around him and get him going, you know what I mean? Whereas some manager think there's too much of a risk. There is a manager out there that's got a, that will take Morelos and think, I'll be able to get him going back to where he is. It's just who that is. I remember it was when we played Feyenoord last year away in the group stages of the Big Jan was in the crowd, Big Rachel. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember after the game, he scored two, and he, honestly, it was unbelievable. And I remember after the game, thinking, he's, he's off. Somebody's signing him for 15, 20, whatever it's going to be, but he's away. There's no way. And then obviously, we didn't get the same off him for the last six months. But after that game, I was just thinking, it's one of the best individual performances I've seen for Rangers. What's he like in the dressing room before games and that? Does, he's he just, quiet, mate. Is he quiet? Just die. He's quiet. But it's like I've said to you, Hartley, I've said it to people all the time. The best Alfredo is the fiery Alfredo. Fredo, uh, so see, see the one that's no getting involved in all the, all the fights and all the kicks and niggles. Now, people then just automatically say there's no interest. Yeah. So you can, kind of win. I mean, kind uh-huh. of win. Uh, your mate Jamie Murphy's went to Hibs as well, Andy. I like Jamie Murphy. Aye, you so got me, have you got me a chance? I do, aye. I do. I, I, I think especially as well over the last sort of year or so we've been saying that there's, there's probably not been the same level of competition in the wider areas and he's went on loan to Burton last year albeit it's Burton and it was League One he's scored seven goals in ten, ten games yeah. so he's, he's done he's held his end in a bargain then I thought coming back this year I thought there was room for him to, to get an opportunity but uh, unfortunately it wasn't the case but what a signing for Hibs mm-hmm. See just on Rangers Paul Slim as an expert crosser the body of his face Barisic and Tavernier are a joke and you and as you said that Morelos would be licking his lips with that so, do you know what I mean um, thought Brandon Barkley was quite poor on Saturday final ball think so uh, I, I, thought, I thought he was alright I, I th- the game was, was was relatively comfortable mm. so but I, I, two best crosses in the league for me two of them Tav and Warner I'm not bad shout actually <laughs> what, about for, what about Forrest you know sticking up here about Forrest, I Forrest. I, I, listen, I've always said I think Forrest is uh, out in his own best player in the league by country mile uh, I, what you said at Tavernier last week, I think the, the criticism Forrest gets 
is so so mate 400 games I know for Celtic so tell, 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 tell me this but is his best position on the left and cutting in well, because I'm, I know it's against Muller on the 2 nil up or something but he just looked so much more dangerous I know look, but is his position better on the left no I, when we grew up I played left he played right and all the managers we played we said they're going to be the next two big kings the twos um, both of you honestly said yeah. brilliant and uh, I was always a left and he was a right Um I would seem right, but you're right. I, I would actually now play Frimpong the night and James in the left. Right. I think that's unstoppable. I really, really do, John. And El Yunusi just out of the picture. El Yunusi's you know, not done it, has he? No. Well, there you go, talking about money. 16 million. Imagine Celtic shelled that sort of yeah. money for El Yunusi thinking. I know Ryan Kent's come up big saying like seven or eight million, and Andy's saying he looked the best player in the party, and he probably knows he's, he's better than a lot of the other. Yeah, you know, she just doesn't do it for me. And listen, see the other night, European game. I thought that was his best game that he's had for Celtic. Yeah. I was just watching it. But I, no, it doesn't do it for me. See but what I think. You've said it as well. You, you thought that you, because these these guys that came through the system, James Forrest, just seems to me it gets criticised so much more than El Yunusi, do you know what I mean? Uh, Andy, what was, uh, see James, you playing with the half uh, So we spoke about it last week, didn't we? Obviously, I've not played a lot of games fullback, but one thing as a fullback is, I actually love playing against that guy. So you, you do as much, obviously, research again before the game, what foot he is and how he plays. I actually love playing against a one-footed player. Whereas one thing I'll say about James Forrest is he can go both ways as quick okay. as the other, which is so hard to play against yeah. when you're a fullback because you'll automatically try and show him onto your strong side. He but he's that comfortable going either way. It's because he doesn't have to play badge and he doesn't play it. But I like that as a player, mate. That's what I'm saying. I like Aye. it, but fans, because he doesn't do it, fans seem to get on his back. I, mean, he's, I, I can't honestly, mate. He's, 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 he's that quiet, he yeah. just becomes easy target. Yeah. When, like, like you said, I mean, his numbers are unbelievable. Celtic goals. like he, he could go now on a run of four or five games where he scores every week and in four or five weeks time he'll be fucking the best things in sliced bread you know what yeah. I mean but but, but see this Kev as well right and I'm getting absolutely sick of this see he's a winger right see if there's no strikers as a horny winger as a horny winger as no strikers I know who you meant to put see the when I, uh... see when I played Andy right and, and we had the big lump John sitting up front he was no bad player but listen <laughs> if, if I was having a bad game and I wasn't really doing well and I could hear the fans getting on me or whatever Sometimes I'd think, I'm not going to try to beat my man. I'm going to stick it in the box. He scores a header and have the water cross and I get this assist. But there's no striker no. for Forrest to hit. So, I, I, listen, I think the criticism is uh, is absolutely shocking. I really do. It's, it's really hurt me. See, when you were wide left and you seen Stephen Crane just take that wee touch at his feet. Sick. What, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely sick. How could you know you'd need to go get Didn't the ball? I need to run in stands and get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best ever. Oh, <laughs> terrific. I'll get that, John, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, Hibs Do you want to ask you about Hibs? Doing well this year But a bad result against Aberdeen Who do you fancy for third? Uh, aye Aberdeen I think they've Been there and done it haven't they? I think they've got that They might have that bit of unity as well We obviously think the, the Aberdeen 8 or whatever That might bring them closer together I think Now he Right we'll show them And uh, How they'll use that as Aye so they stick they together Like they've maybe been getting a lot of grief on social media and off all the press and different things. So uh, yeah, you can't you can't complain with what Dent McInnes has done. How can he compete against Celtic and then obviously Rangers come up and spending money? He, he's basically just going for third and hopefully getting a cup run and getting to the final or something. He's looking great, Dent McInnes, isn't he? Yeah, I was noticing that last night. Unbelievable, he's mate. Right back, the beard's looking. He's Cans. Eyes. Had the wee black tight top on, looked a wee bit ripped in that. He must be in the gym as well, Si. Uh -huh. And he's got cons tied up there, he can't go wrong, eh? It's not a big cons. But see, you see, to be fair, yes, I, I, Aberdeen... I can <laughs> move it, if you <laughs> say you love me so... I can boogie, 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 all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get the big man on it? Aye, definitely. Definitely. Uh, Aberdeen for third, Paul? Absolutely, I said two weeks ago, my will get it, but... <laughs> I believe Aberdeen will get it just with their recent results um, they, they, do you know what I'm so proud of Derek McInnes and the boys they've done amazing because they came back um, after that the boys been out and all that and it was yeah. a nightmare but they've come back so strong I think the boy McCrory's made a big difference uh, to them Andy Aberdeen are brilliant at just beating everyone outside Old Firm and I used to if you played Aberdeen at the weekend and you'd played like a Hibs the week before I used to always think Hibs, Hibs are a better team but then next week Aberdeen will play Hibs and they just always won yeah. so one thing I say about Aberdeen is Dell's got them so well organised that they just do so well against everybody outside the old firm and, and they probably will end up finishing third again this well, year. What a sign in that McCrory. Now, you see when he came, he came in to the Rangers. Done well, didn't he? A couple of years ago, I thought. Now yeah. he's 
Brilliant. Brilliant. Against Celtic, he played well, wasn't it? Was ah, game against Celtic, he played sitting midfield. Uh, aye, and I'm thinking, and then he sort of fell away and fell out the team, but he'll probably go there and get a gaff. John, what was your play him play him as well? Because he could, he's a Rangers fan, he could have sat there and sat on the bench, but and he's, went to Portsmouth, he now wants to go and play at Aberdeen, so fair play him. And yeah. he's... Like I, I said he was a centre half last week. He showed his versatility by putting centre mid. So is he good on the ball, Andy? Andy, can he Andy. play? Can he play? He's a good player, mate. Aye, yeah. and the way that he's, if he's, if he has end up playing holding midfield for Aberdeen, the way that they're going to want him to play is going to be perfect as well. Because he's, he's so quick happen. across the pitch, so he can cover the width of the pitch and break it up, and then and get the players forward in front of him. No, as I said last week, he's not he's not the tallest in the world, but he's unbelievable leap. So that's why when he played centre half. He could still dominate something there, could just face his area his area ability did have some leap. Another huge goal for Lewis Ferguson, Kev. Huge. What a penalty. That was massive. I think because we've only talked about them in a negative way because of the COVID nineteen thing, which is a wee bit unfair, but ultimately I thought Hibs were going to do well and Aberdeen's comfortably beat them at Easter Road. So for me, Hib- Aberdeen are going to finish third, hopefully in but it's, it makes it interesting, side because something the Rangers are all fancy playing Aberdeen. No, I know Rangers have already beat Aberdeen first game of the season. Yeah. But <clears throat> that was maybe a good time to get Aberdeen. Uh, people are forgetting as well. Uh, they're missing a 25 goal a season striker. Like, uh, yeah. right, so when Celtic come right to playing Aberdeen the next few weeks, it's not going to be easy. Right, John, Slaney, what? Sorry, John, uh-huh. who's your uh, favourite ever Celtic game? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Part of that Belgrade. You know, we listened to it. Well, when I was about Aye. twelve. In the other ones. Where's the queue? Where's the queue? He gave you. It's just a here. Okay, just collect so Don't lose it. Don't lose John, it. John, I, I, I didn't want to put you in the spot, no, no, and I hate doing that to you. But whatever. Um, see, Peter Edden is he as homely as he looks. <laughs> <laughs> Ebo. Ebo, uh, he's a horny man. Mate, how, did, how long he... did he take for a shot, man? Uh, well, I think it was that time he played. I think he played a silly one. He just was dead to go under Roddy Skid at the world. I think he, oh. he, he took five minutes or something to play a shot and I saw him done a 147 uh, and that five thing, and a half aye five and a half minutes it must be so frustrating Selby's the aye. same to us he sometimes just says I don't take a shot Selby man. done it against me six minutes he took for a shot and I'm sitting playing him I'm thinking what the Aye, six minutes. He is but, a torturer, Selby. But he's <laughs> he's got a cheek to call himself the jester, mate. Looks like he's never told a joke in his life, man. He's quite funny. Is he funny, is he? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's great, job when you're like, Obviously, you're in the heat of a match. He's played mind games against each other when you're taking time with a shot, or do you think, well, oh, he's fucking annoying me? Well, I, I think it was mind games, even. It was Ronnie Dennett against Selby in the semis of the world there. I, I didn't really watch a lot of the match. I watched the end of it. And I saw him just smashing the balls about just to try and get Matt <laughs> out, out, out of his comfort zone because it was as if he knows he couldn't compete with him in the safety department, although Sullivan had brought at safety, but he was just trying to get Mark at it and he did. He, he went 16 14 behind and then he came back and won. Selby came out in the interview after as well, didn't he? Yeah, he was disrespectful. But there you go. Now, because he just threw right in front of ah. the camera, if, if he'd have maybe waited a couple of minutes, he'd have maybe calmed down a little bit, but he's come right out and he's like, well, he's a bit disrespectful. But See, when we get on that, is there ever scraps after it? Is it ever heated the way somebody's goes. played against you? Uh-huh. Uh, not, uh, no, not really. Well, there was a time, uh, it was Quentin Han, a guy, an Australian boy, and Andy Hicks. He, he, he was he, Quentin Han was a... Uh, and it was, it was Andy Hicks or some was just quiet, dead quiet. Andy Hicks and Quentin Han was just baiting them all through the game at the world because you're sitting next to each other and he's just like, "You're shit now. I'm, go- <laughs> I'm going to beat you here." Blah 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 blah. But Andy Hicks beat him ten nine. And the fuck, the only words Andy Hicks says to Quentin Han after it says, "That's you at the sixteen, you knob." <laughs> now he, like, <laughs> no, he just killed him. You know what I mean? And then Quentin Han in the extension, he's like, "Fuck it, I'll get you at side now." And then I, 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 no, I, 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 I'd, I'd love that man. I'd love no, yeah. games. Oh, I'd be coughing, farting, <laughs> trying to I mean, what? what they used to do back in the eighties. That's what, like Alex Higgins. I mean, you were sitting together. Alex Higgins used to smoke, and you'd players like Willie Thorne. God rest him. Like he used to be like that with the with the cloth because he'd, he'd be smoking a cigarette before he'd go to the table and then just sit it there <laughs> just so the smoke's <laughs> in your eyes and it, and it must have happened it must have happened so many times back back in the day there must have been all Gary Holt be struggling man <laughs> 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 oh, yeah what mind games do you do with your dad when you're playing oh maybe 
We, well, it's 50p a game up the club, but I've never ever got the 50, so he has to pay. That's fucking <laughs> that is a true story, and all that isn't exactly funny. I'm always scared. But here, well, John, I watched a video you a couple of weeks ago, and it was, this is mental, this, by the way, I couldn't believe this. The, you got Barry Hawkins in a, a shot, and he's went for two attempts, missed it, and on the third attempt, he potted it, mm. but he couldn't pot it the first Aye. two. Remember that? Aye, I remember it. It, so was, it was in the did world. Did he know he spot it, right? The, it was the in the world semi. Uh, and I was cracking up because Aye, he, I, I, I went away from the table and, and I thought I genuinely snookered him. But he's, he's missed it the two times and then he's went down and potted it. And I'm fucking thinking, I'm like, fucking, how can he pot that? Now? But no, but, no, a snooker? He's actually just potted no, it. I, I thought I'd sort of put him in a really difficult so position, he but he's went down and potted it. But he obviously, somebody must have said, Higgins was raging there. So he got me in the practice room. He says, John, I could see that shot. He says, I went for it. And he says, I didn't know where the white was going. I could have been smashing into like 10 mm, reds or something right. and leaving the game on. But he said, that was the reason I didn't go for it the first two times. So mm. I said, no, fair do right. I just thought you, you, you were totally like knackered with that shot. So it, it does, oh no, listen, there, there is a lot of cheating that goes on. That's what I'm saying, like, with, with the Chinese boys, they've no sort of grew up with, with the British way, the etiquette and different things mm. now. Whereas if we had to do that in a club, guys would pull you up and say, like, you can't do that. Whereas the Chinese boys... They're always trying to get an edge, sort right. of thing. So they're maybe more prone to it than, than the British boys. So, British. have you got a favourite snooker match of all time? Favourite snooker match of all time. The final, John's 2011 win. Oh, really? How age would you have been there then? 2000, I was at Selic. Really? At Selic. I remember, but with you, John, and you and Ronnie, I don't like you bring him in, but your matches, <laughs> I get dead. No, I get dead nervous. <laughs> see, 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 do you want to win when they play? Uh, John, honestly, mm. but, <laughs> no, I swear to God, but when I watch snooker, mate, it's, I find it dead. I know we other players, but I don't really, I watch it, but I don't have a feeling, but with John, I think it's the most nervous feeling watching snooker. See, because it's dead quiet, and by the way, the kicks terrify me. The kicks, John? See, the oh, kicks, the kicks the on the, 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 uh, the table. Oh, uh -huh. see, when you're on a break, oh, please don't get a kick. But see, anything you're doing, it's like, you hate playing safe, safety in it. Oh, terrible. Hate playing safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, another shot, Matt Doherty, who was at Hibs, got absolutely battered in a Scottish Cup final. Has now just moved to Tottenham for a fortune. Do you know what's so the you how, most how, embarrassing thing ever, though? The tweet. The tweet. What are they doing, man? And people tell me there's rivalries in England. Do you imagine that happened up here? No. What was the tweet? I don't know. So he, he's an Arsenal fan, right? And they went back to his Twitter for like 2010, 11. He's like, come on, Arsenal, I'm a massive Arsenal fan. So. Tottenham have done a tweet of him deleting all his Arsenal tweets and he's like, ah, can you imagine a Rangers no, player? Like, no, no. Oh, Shelly and exactly Rangers crazy. Twitter putting them deleting it's tweets. And it I I've said that before, there's not one derby in England. Nah. Not one derby. Kid on, innit? Ah, you see them all sitting next to each other on the couch. Half and half scarves and all that. Oh, embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any other players you remember watching who you thought were shite and ended up getting a big move? Um, Do you know what I, I, I'll say something right, it's probably for the benefit of Slaney. See, when I was at Sunderland, Anthony Stokes came on trial us, right? When he was young at Arsenal, it was Arsenal. And I don't think he was, a, I thought he was hopeless. Right. And obviously, he ended up getting a move to Celtic and stuff. So, I, that, no, it's not a massive signing, but. I don't know if you know his family. Thought, one opinion. <laughs> and then, eh? I don't know if you know his family, but I would take that back. I'm the first. <laughs> Does he know where I stay? I think so. Anybody else? Aye, Shane Duffy. <laughs> 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 nah, nah, yeah. it's. I hate, I, I, honestly, I hate, I, I wouldn't even answer. If I had one in my head, I wouldn't answer because I know what it's like for people to say you're shite, John. No, I mean, like, <laughs> I, so, uh, I, I wouldn't answer that. I can't think of well, I mean, Pookie. Pookie, yeah. Uh, I mean, when he was at Celtic, I don't know if he got a chance, did he? But he's obviously went down there and bummed it up in the Premier League, didn't he? Scoring the goals. But... You played with Pookie, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Good. And sent it to me a monster member. What? He was hopeless at Celtic, by the way. Uh -huh. Absolutely. No, no, I was. He was shite. <laughs> he's been doing the Ambient Real. But he'd be fair, he's starting to know. He's not been starting to show recently. Yeah. So. What was he like as a guy? I mean, genuinely, so scruffy. Guy scruffy and <laughs> clatty, you know what I mean? Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny McLean did say on the podcast that he's a top player, though. Did he? Uh huh. You were, you were on it? No, I was not. No, he. Oh, you pretended July 5 was not working, uh huh. Uh, right, where are we going now? Oh, Aberdeen and Motherwell in Europe. Brilliant results for a minute. Because Kilmarnock got beat last year off that part-time team, so 6-0 for Aberdeen, John. No, 6-0 for Motherwell. What was that? 5-1. 5-1, 6-0. 5-0, Great results, eh? Brilliant. I know, you say it's so coefficient. I know Celtic didn't help it there, but you, you want your teams to do well for those coefficient, aren't you? Uh, Aberdeen getting through. Do you think they will? 
I mean, I know it's got to be tough for certain Rangers to get through to the, the group stages, but could they get through to the group How stages? How many games have they got is to it, get there? I know, but what is it? A, another two. Is it one is it another, No, no, another, three. What, is three. it another two one-half games? Aye, so that's what I was going to say. Is it, three. if you're seeded, you're at home? Uh, mate, don't ask any questions that are not on the sheet. Cause nobody yeah, apologies, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, is, it no, is it no Celtic Rangers are in the third? Are they not going to the third? Oh, I Aye, know. but I think Aberdeen and Motherwell started for the first time. Oh, did they? they, they so I think right, right. John, three who's your favourite Celtic player ever? Larson, is it? No, Big I Sutton. No, I no, Paul McStay. Paul McStay. I've never that, seen Paul McStay. That was, that was Paul McStay. Oh, he was, Paul he was, he's a oh, god. Well. He was an absolute god. But aye, uh, Big Sutton. After that, <laughs> Tierney will be raging with you. Who? Tierney. I said, yeah, I know that's Did terrible. That saying, that's terrible saying. Is that, that you that spread that on his wall? <laughs> You're not far <laughs> from. Ah, that's terrible. <laughs> no, listen. He is. I mean, listen. My boys over there. Like, like I think you do it when you're younger. And Tier. Uh, McStay was, was my hero and the lights my boy like Tierney was his hero yeah. sort of thing and with him leaving I can remember the night they, they, they were in the pool room at the house and that and, they were, and then it came on Sky Sports News and they were all playing pool and it says Kieran Tierney's left and all his mates just says oh we're away home they, they all just sort of left I think and they all just <laughs> when they hate me crying you know what I mean like because it, it was such it was such a, an icon for, for the, the younger the, the older generation yeah. as well but the younger generation in the Green Brigade... Did you ever get to meet Paul McStay? Aye. Well, I, a couple of times, aye. In fact, the story was he, he was he was getting something signed. He was needing a, a snooker queue for a charity doing. Now, your hero. And I wasn't in. I'd, I'd signed a queue and left it. I was away at a tournament. And my brother came in for work one day. And, and, and he walked in the front door and he'd just seen this guy sitting, having a cup of tea. And brother's like, that. That looks like the hat there. No, I just... But obviously it's no Paul McStay and he's walked out the kitchen and my mum says, that Celtic player Paul McStay's in now, your brother's left a queue, he gets signed for a charity thing. And my brother's went running away through, he's like, ah, Paul McStay, how's it going? Like, and it was Paul McStay, he was in, he was in just picking some up for a, for a charity thing and then you think, such a down to earth guy yeah. as well, you know what I mean? The likes of him and Kieran Tierney and that, now big, big, biggest Celtic man you could get. And, and I'm sure Kieran, listen, a lot of the money aside and different things, he would have stayed with Celtic for the rest of his life, but there comes a point where he can set his family up for life and he's going down to play in the English Premier League. How can any Celtic fan now begrudge him? Begrudge him something yeah. like that. Now, who, was your, who was your hero? Gaza. Was it? Uh, I got a chance to meet him a couple of years ago as well. He was mad with it. <laughs> <laughs> he was mad with it. But, uh, Do you know who you are? I, well, he was, he, it was at the Rangers game, oh, so he was right. obviously there hospitality wise. I think he did like the half time draw or whatever. And uh, obviously after the game, if, if your family's there, you go up to the players' rooms, obviously see your family. So I was walking up the marble staircase and one of the lasses that worked at the hospitality says, oh, somebody's up there, like you'll probably want to meet. Walked up the stairs and, and seen Gaza. And obviously, you was being Celtic, guys, you probably appreciate my hero was Gaza and what a play they was. See, when you were a boy, what was your favourite game growing up? Do you remember the second Hon game? No, honestly, though, no, honestly, <laughs> I, I've said this it was when they won the league in seven minutes at Robbie Park see because I was old enough to drink Aye. like I was there with all my pals and, and we just had like who was the manager there? Bought, bought a mad dog before well, I get who was the manager? Smith, Walter Smith yeah. and uh, just, just the day we had obviously just because winning the league in 5-0 3-0 up inside seven minutes and just uh, the night that it ended, ended up that, that was that was probably one of my best were you the biggest self the Rangers man there? Oh, you, I, I, I had I had a since I was four year old as I had a season ticket fifteen year even when I obviously played full time when I was down south I'd still come back and but it's still, like oh you just the way you're brought up ah, and the way exactly. you're fed ah. and Rangers are better than Celtic. Did you hear his McGregor story? The what? You heard his Alan McGregor oh, story? I probably, 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 probably. I've, I've met I've played poker with we, um, he's he loved, plays the cards and that didn't he? He's some man, but I, he's I, such a no. We watched him over the years, right? You're like, ah, fucking McGregor now, like the way, <laughs> the way he is. But see, when he sat down, he's so opposite. quiet. He nah, doesn't really speak. Guys are winding him up at the table and different things. And he's the nicest guy in the world. But as soon as he goes on that, yeah, as he crosses that white line, I've said this, I, I'd love for him to come on here. Uh, get him on, brilliant. Aye, aye. See how you're saying about that? You've got a pool table in your house. Have you ever been, has anybody ever beat you? I can't he beat my boy, Pierce? Aye, can he beat him? No, he's, ah, really? He beats me all the time. No way. He beats me all the time. Why does he not play snooker then? Is it he can't play snooker, he's hopeless at snooker, but, <laughs> but he can play pool, you know what I mean? Do you, you could take somebody and make them like a world champion? Is... Nah. 
Nah, it's going to be tough. Nah, it'd be really tough. What about him? He could do it with Slaney now. He has, he's, he's got that sort of genius bit about him. No, I mean, he's, he's on the spectrum. But, so, <laughs> <laughs> I could, I, could so him, I could maybe take him. I could maybe take him. John, but see, you, you, Maguire, and McGill played at these. Nah. Is it a we? Is it a house we've, or No, we've got a unit in Glasgow. That's what I'm saying. Who picks the balls out? But I'll date me. I'll pick the balls out. Me, Bora, eh? Listen, listen. listen. I don't date during the day. Me, me, and Ants would love you to come in, but big, big Stevie. Yeah, he, he wouldn't like you. In. He no. doesn't like anybody. So if you come in, he would. Nah. Does, does he ever stay off? I'll maybe give you a shout the odd time in night and then because me and Ants would like you and but Big Stevie and that. Would you be the ref? That'd be brilliant. Love to be that mate. Just pick your boys out. <laughs> <laughs> what about in a pub and that? Do you play pool as well? Oh, I used to play you're younger than that, you're in the, used to play the game Killer. I don't know if any Killer, right. Killer, right. play pool. It's the best game in the world now. Like just you're all putting a pound in each and having a few beers and ah, it's just, she played it later, later on this afternoon. You should get a yeah, 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 yeah. couple of games of killer. Right, we're nearly done. Kev, soccer Saturday panel. We've sacked him. Charlie Nick, Slaney's mate. Fine on. Matt Letizia, Phil Thompson. <laughs> Good decision. Is it time to go or are you sad to see him leave? Sorry, do you know what, right? I'm always of the mindset that sometimes the old guard needs changing, right? But see, with them lot, they were quite fine. Like, yeah. I like them. We've got a corporation here in Scotland that has the same similar thing on the radio, Soccer Saturday, BBC style. Yeah. And we've tried to okay. jump up with some newer, younger faces, but we've still got the old guard in there as well. For me, Si, a, a poor decision, I think. Right. Um, who did you like at A3? Who, who did you like listening to? Do you know what? I oh. didn't really love any of them, mm. but it's just the camaraderie they had. Like, I don't really particularly like any of us. We used to play like <laughs> right? But we just, we just you know, so it's absolutely, it's just similar. No, no, I'm oh. happy. I'm happy that I'm going. Oh yeah, ah, Charlie the Nicholas. Charlie Nicholas, I'm happy. But his platter was like, it was so bad. It was, it was funny, so bad. Like. It was good. I remember <laughs> um, that with Jeffy, your glasses. That, that one, was that one oh, that's the worst part that I've ever heard. <laughs> but the thing is, with the sort of Saturday, I remember when it was Rodney Mars, George Best. Oh, they were good. Man. And they were good. Uh -huh. But they got replaced, mm. so they probably will get replaced, and it probably will be okay. But for me, I don't know. I just it's always Jeff's days. Je yeah. Jeff's the one that keeps everybody going, just like you keep all us going. No, have you heard who's going to replace Jeff? No, Johnny Sunderland. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine the views like that. <laughs> what me, man? Is he leaving? Is Jeff still on leave? He's, he's talking about quitting because he's he, been sacked. Has he? He done a few snooker tournaments back in the day with Sky. And he, he, he was good. Ah, he was uh -huh. right. He, you knew, he, well, you know, he must know his job on that now. He, he's brilliant, but he was great with, with the snooker and that. And he, he, nice guy after you could get a couple of pints now. Could you, huh? Aye, lovely fella. Lovely Mercy's fella. Too. Was, ah, I've met Mercer. He's brilliant. He's he? Mercer's oh, the best. Oh, Mercer's aye, so aye, aye. But if, if, if Jeff leaves, it's gone in. It's a bogey. It was, it was like the old soccer MC when Tim Lovejoy. I, I never watched an old soccer yeah. MC when Tim yeah. Lovejoy finished. I was it. I think the last couple of years it's got worse though. What's okay? It used to be a lot. No, talk us out of it. But the boys have never put a cut one or that in it during, if you're getting a bevy up. But say, that's like you be open goal for you. No, I don't. And that's what I'm talking about. You'll see me in sports team. Who would you want in with soccer? Who would you change them with? Great question, John. I see monkeys. Who would you change them with? Like, if you could pick out, like, John, I'm no joking. I know you could be a big I know me. I love the snooker commentators. No, the commentator, the pundits. I think, I, I think I think you've got to, like, I know Parrot and Davis, they are the two I main ones, but Davis. I think you've got to maybe change them soon because there comes a point where you think Parrot and Davis are brilliant there. Yeah. I know that seeing the mics when you're not sitting at the snooker and you're listening to them, uh -huh. their analysis is brilliant. Oh, the commentator, no, when the commentator, commentator yeah. but who would, you, who would you change that with the soccer Saturday? You, you could try and think, like, I know Mercer, they're talking about Michael Richards, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. that's such a hard job to replace as well. Is it though? You stay at Brown, like, how's that? We could replace, we could do it. Ah, of course we could. I, 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 I couldn't. Do you think you, you could? Have a, you I could. Do you if I had a, a soccer sack Roy Keane. Scotland. There you go. Get Roy Keane there. I don't think he's too. He's too. He's too. Nah, he, he's, no, he's got a dry sense of humour. I think he'd be alright. I think so. I think he'd wind Mercer up. Roy Where's... Keane, Pilo the Canyon, and Tommy Gravison for three. Pilo the Canyon. The Canyon would be Daniel. box office with Canyon. Ian Wright. Would Ian Wright? I think Ian's oh. alright. I think he's alright. Ian Wright. I don't know who I think would be quite good. But this name would Ray Palmer. Oh, ah, he, man. He's, but he sounds Ray funny. Mate, they should all sit with a drink. That would be much better, wouldn't it? What they should they should sit with a drink. Bullard. Bullard. Oh, that's a great. Ah, there Bullard, you go. Bullard, Harlan. Merson and 
Oh, I'll ask him now, Ray. Jeff Ray, Ray do you fancy it? He'll stay for that, won't he? Jeff Stellan will stay for that. Was his line up, wouldn't he? Well, McCoy, McCoy should be good on it. Aye, McCoy is oh, he's good. He's good at everything he does. Do you talk to him, McCoy? I've met him a couple of times. I don't really know him that well, but he's unreal, man. So do you think he's a legend? So man, you, knowing you, obviously, you talked about being a scene tickle before. Do you? Is he a legend? No, no, you know he is a legend. But what I'm saying, do you feel do you get giddy if you were to speak to McCoy? Do you even know you would know him now in the footballing world? Aye. You play football. That as a fan, I, like we were speaking about James Forrest getting criticism. I'm a coach scored 350 goals for Rangers, and they had to get me a criticism from him. So wow. it shows they're just local boys and that. But unreal, man! I like to see listening to him in the in the telly and radio and that. He's he's just utter comedy. I love him. I he, Brazil, he would be perfect done. for that. Brazil's brilliant as well, aren't you? You ever met him on Brazil now? Aye, aye, aye. You had a drink on. Just loves the champagne. Have you had a drink on? <laughs> no. Do you have any? No. Sorry, tell me you've seen the latest Alan Brazil video. He's yeah. in my bear, right? And the hotel that he's went to drink at went on fire. The place is burning down the background, and Alan Brazil is standing there on the top half a glass of <laughs> champagne. So there's no money, just get close to the beach, and we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, I. True, I. I haven't got the weekend. Oh, I, just, I, I just thought McCoy's. Well, now, because they're saying he's, he's stripping his days back, isn't he? Alan Brazil. I thought McCoy's would just take over. Has he got to take over? Nah, back? Laura Woods is dead, isn't she? But she's brilliant, isn't she, man? She's oh, good, isn't she? She's yeah. good. Um, is that truth or that Brazil only drank champagne? No, I don't know. No, you, you just hear him. He's always saying he's drank ah, champagne. Sure, Where bad. did you meet him? I, I want to I know John. I still met him. Where's the name of John? Have you been out? <laughs> no, no, honestly. <laughs> I can't remember him. Who's, yeah, the, who's the best guy you've had a beer with, celebrity wise? Alan Brazil, isn't it? No, <laughs> who the best guy you've been Do you love a bit of Brazil? <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kevin Bridges. Just say Kevin Bridges. Where did you get a pint, huh? He's brilliant. Oh, well, I, I was, I was, last year, I was in uh, Belfast, or two years ago or something, I actually went to his show. Went to his show, the whole family we went to his show in Glasgow. And then I was playing a tournament in Belfast and then a few mates over there and I says, look, we've got to go and see. He was playing in the high, the SAC or something over there. I says, look, we've got to go and see. We've got tickets for him. Just bought them myself, didn't you know him? Now sort of thing. And then we're walking back, back into the town after it with a couple of beers in the bar. Then we've walked, walked back to our digs and this big Range Rover's pulled up. Just as we were walking by this hotel, it was unbelievable the moment. And who's got it? It was Ken Bridges. And I'd met him at a couple of Celtic games just sitting there. And I shouted to him, all right, Kevin, you're brilliant. And he's like, oh, wait, wait, you's doing over here? And he went, he says, come on in. And a couple of beers. And we ended up in there. He had a big suite, he had a big pool table. Oh, and we had, we had a few berries and played pool all night. And Did aye, you shout your pool? Oh, I shout your pool. <laughs> John, John, John it's it's story time, right? <laughs> God's honest, Duff. You know, we don't tell lies on this show. <laughs> so I was at a Champions League final, right? It was, uh, it was in Milan. Can't remember who it was at the time, I think it was... It was at Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, second year, right? So I'm at the airport coming back to the Champions League final and Kevin Bridges is sitting there. So right. I never met him, but I love him, honestly. Right. I, I think he's tremendous. Right. So I was like, ah, it was me, we, Jason Holt, my agent. I was like, I need to ask him for a picture. Like, <laughs> what a guy he is. But I was, he was sitting there, he had his earphones in, I didn't want to annoy him. So I waited. I was just staring at him for five minutes, like a mad weirdo, <laughs> waiting for me up. And I was like, right, I'm going for it. I was like, Kevin, can, can I get a picture? And he's like, all right, all right. Like one of them ones, right? Oh, did he? I was like, oh. fucking hell, mate. So I've got a picture, I've got a picture on my phone, I'm going to show you after, I've got a picture on my phone, walking to the gate, and he, he knows my agent, so he was like, oh, how are you, and he was like, how are you, he's like, oh, who are you, he's like, oh, we're at the Champions League final, I'm here with Andy Hardy, just know, he's like, oh, it's, it's Hardy, and how are you, right? And I stood, I stood next to him, and I met, I just asked you for a phone, he fucking basically said no, he's like, oh, it's Hardy, that's that, you know, that's a that true story. <laughs> uh, right, last few bit lads. Messi's leaving Barcelona. The world's fucked, isn't it? It's a sad day, John, isn't it? If Messi leaves Barcelona. Ah, it's 2020, like, I don't think he will leave. I know, there must be. There you go. As he says, that. it's like a power play, isn't it? Because like, he's, he's obviously bigger than the whole club and he's big, he, he wants, is it the president? He wants yeah, him it, to leave or something. So, how can he leave now at 33? I mean, he's got all the money in the world, isn't he? And, no. I, I mean, I, I, I'm the same as you. I don't think he'll go. Don't yeah. think he'll Have you ever been at a club that you've been that good at the club and you were that big that you wanted the chairman or, that, or the president? Well, Boca. I did here. Jake, you'll go slowly now. No, I don't think he will. I see the thing is with Messi though. 
Would you get to a stage where, like, because people are saying Ronaldo's uh, been in England and Italy, do you think with Messi he would want to try in a league to go and prove? No, I don't think he cares. I don't think he do. cares. Nah. So. I'm the same as, uh, as what John said. I, don't, I just don't know why he would leave. He's been at Barca his full career. The money's there. And he's, surely he, he wants to leave and hide, doesn't he? He wanted, he wanted, he wanted Javi to, to get the job done. He wanted Javi to get the job. But much would you need to pay for Messi to get him? As he said. So I mean, was it something that at least cost a 600 million or something? I don't even pay that. It's 33, isn't it? Nah, if he is going to go somewhere, Kev, where are you at Man City or the front runners? I think it's the only team that can afford to. PSG as well, maybe? Aye, but I don't know how that works because it, somebody says they're on 100 million quid a year in wages. I'd love to see him in the Prem if he does move. Oh, that's he can't have got a PSG and be chasing Andrew Herrera's no. passes, can he? If he's going to go anywhere, sign it's a company in this Premiership because apparently it's the best league in the world, which we all know is a lot of shite. <laughs> but, um, he's got to. This whole obviously compare Ronaldo because he played in England. That, that's, that's obviously like a, a it's not really an argument because they play in the Champions League against all the the teams anyway. So he's proved himself there. But it's it's he's not going to leave Barcelona. He'll get what he wants, and that's what he's why he's doing what he's doing. He wants the present out. Once he's out, then things will change. Is he happy with Ronald Koeman? I, I don't think he is. So how how does that change? Yeah. Uh, never asked you on here. This will be the last question. Is he the best player ever, John? Who, Messi? For me, I've seen them all at well, Parkhead. Messi, Ronaldo, Halliday. I've mean, <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> no, I went... We were invited, we were down in Wembley. We, we were playing the Masters in London and it was a time France were playing England. It was a, it was an international game. Uh, it was, I think it was in about 98 in Zidane and it was an Elka and Zidane was playing that day and he was up against Scholes, Beckham, Red and that, but I've, and I've just never seen him in my Zidane life. Zidane was brilliant, wasn't it? Zidane oh, was just a ballerina. Mm, on, on, on the ballerina and, and he yeah. put two balls through, I think, to an Elka. I think they beat England 2 0, but they absolutely toyed with him. And I say that performance there was just incredible. Zidane. And and it was funny because they were staying in our hotel. No, they were staying in like the Hilton Hotel right next to Wembley. And I don't know if he's ever been at the Hilton Hotel. He only no. stays in Premier Inns, don't you? Premier Inns. No, but it, it was. Do you went to them Kudons with Hilton Hotel? Aye, it's a nice hotel, aye, nice hotel. You're just putting too much in there, aren't you? Aye. I know the boy that runs it off. Get us a suite the next time, aye, you can do with it. Did they speak about him, didn't they? No, nobody spoke about him, no. Listen, Zidane was Zidane was Zidane was was in the hotel and Tony Drago is the biggest Juventus fan, right? He loved Juventus. And Tony Drago beat Stephen Hendry that afternoon, right? He he beat him he beat him what six two or something. Tony Drago with three centuries in a row or something. He, he played amazing and he was that quick as well. And Drago's got in the lift and somebody stopped the lift and who's got in? Jorkai Evan Zidane. Right, wow. they've got in the lift. Wow. And big Drago, he's like, ah, sitting there, he's like, oh my God. And Zidane is turning around to Drago and he says, ah, Drago. And he went like that. He says, three hundred breaks. He says, magnifico, magnifico. Drago just passed out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Packed. Now, that was his hero. Uh-huh. And, he, and it was that time they were down there. He went like, magnifico. Zidane saying to Tony Drago. So Zidane, this, no, it was obviously, it might have been on. They might right. have just been relaxing in the afternoon, put the TV on and snooker was on. And Drago beat Henry. Amazing. He says, magnifico, 300 breaks. Drago says, best, best. 50 seconds of his life uh-huh. what's the best uh-huh. 50 seconds of your life Paul? <laughs> last night <laughs> Andy, uh, can I, sorry that good, Andy, Andy who's the best player you've played against? played against? Mm. I'm going to answer what, watch first uh, Rangers Villarreal at Ibrox Raquel Henrik Mace. Messi and all that's it but Ra- uh, Raquel oh, made for the 90 minutes at what a player man he was sitting at the same as Celtic Park uh, wow. played against I'd say Hazard probably Oh, sweet. Oh, just, can't, just, can't, just can't get near him. Just, FA Cup. So he got a big backside, yeah. they say. He just backs into you. And so. just over five yards, he's got to be up there with the quickest in the world. Just, just the way he shifts the ball and back to, like he said, back to Arson, he let Big John McGinn and just shifts a bit. <laughs> Not real. So then best player ever? Best player ever? Craigan. Craigan would be up there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you've got to go Messi, Simon, haven't you? Messi. Yeah. you've got to, mate. Yeah. For you, Messi? So. Ronaldo, who? Uh, probably Messi, I'd say. Uh, Messi, aye. Uh, what about you, Kev? Maradona, I, I, I see Messi. Maradona's my favourite. Oh, Maradona's my favourite. Uh, he's, he's my favourite. Maradona's my favourite. John, do you see the wee thing for me, Maradona? Kev's not. Kev's not answered now. He's going to let Kev answer. I'm glad Kev's done that. He's going to let Kev answer. 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 He
I think Ronaldo sometimes has been like Ronaldo for me. I don't know. Ronaldo's hard work. He's got it where he is on hard work. Messi's Whereas, Ronaldo does a lot of things individually that are like of the oh my god, did he really just do that? And I think that's what separates him from the from. There's not much to split between the two of them, but Messi for me, it's just been brilliant. Which best player you've played against? Oh, eh. Henri. Henri, definitely. Oh, oh you, wow. You look at Henri, right? Like, I could not believe this, how tall Big Kev is. And yeah, you say, massive. like, if Henri is John the same sort. you said that, because I thought you were going to say how wide I was there. No, <laughs> not, honestly, <laughs> could, not, honestly, it was a no, moment, it's huge, man. Huge. Uh-huh. And you think, like, guys. I know, because every time this show goes out each week, I don't know where the cameraman is doing the show. <laughs> Like enhances me the front, you know. <laughs> so the garlic is only come fucking extremely large, and the wee boys at the back. But no, like, no. Andy was talking about Gaza the other night. I remember like meeting Gaza in a pub in 1999, 2000. He was off his head then, right? And I got the chance to play against him for Sunderland against Middlesbrough. Come on for ten minutes, and the, we had a corner, and they cleared it, and it came out to Gaza, and he brought it down, and I thought. He's a Newcastle pl- fan. He loves Newcastle. I'm playing for something. I'm just going to fucking two foot him. <laughs> and I chased. I just thought I'm going for him, right? So I was like the young, young pop chasing after him. Went for him, got him, slight tackle, and the fans went, yeah, yeah. And that's my like claim to Gaza. And after the after game, I actually said, look, mate, I didn't really mean to tackle you. I'm sorry. I just had to try and get the fans on the side. <laughs> Is that Andy Ball, mate? Andy Ball. I was like, Gaza, Andy Ball, mate. But that's just like, like Andy said, I was in all Gaza. Like, Gaza was fucking. There was a, there was a period where he was. The best midfielder in the world. And right, we'll end on Sorry, it. Sorry, it's only a game show. To end this. Well done, boys. That was great.